Hey you, this is Marnie, and thanks for listening to the Ask Women podcast. Hey, do me a favor. Take a quick moment to give us some feedback on our iTunes page. We'd really love to know what you think of us. And also, give us five stars, just because. Coming up on this week's episode of the Ask Women podcast, we have Jordan Harbinger back in studio with us of the Jordan Harbinger new podcast. You have to listen to it. It's absolutely amazing. And he gives us a little preview today on our show where we talk about people going through breakups and how to recover from rejection. We also talk about dating with things you don't like about yourself and how to date multiple women and whether or not you tell multiple women that you are dating multiple women. Anyway, keep listening to this show episode. Hey guys, welcome to Ask Women. It's Kristen Carney and Marnie Kinris here for you guys as always. And we have a very special guest with us. He's been on the show before, Mm -hmm. formerly of Art of Charm, now from the Jordan Harbinger show, Jordan Harbinger. Yeah. And can you spell it? That is... I can. H A R B I N G E R. Yeah. And the last time I was here, you titled the show Jordan Har Har Harbinger because I kept making crappy jokes the whole time. Oh, really? We yeah. did. <laughs> Someone else must have done that. <laughs> I That's think that was funny. when you were a Playboy, maybe? Yeah. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Well, the, Somebody else with a great sense of humor. The first Nobody time, here. The first time I came on, Kristen was like, let's call it Fart of Charm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am yeah. so mature. Yeah. Jeez, yeah, you nailed memory. that memory. You know what? I am maturing because that didn't even occur to me right now. No. Well, are you're, you're so sophisticated I'm in, now. It's like heart of charm now to me. Yes. I'm yeah. so sophisticated. Go. Well, why don't you tell people what's been going on with you? Um, yeah. Because you had a bad situation happen. I did. I had a, that's turned out to be wonderful. That's right. I had a breakup of business. Mm-hmm. I'm married now, mm-hmm. but I had a breakup of business, which Congratulations. is- Congratulations. Like or both, di- actually. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It was kind of, but breaking up in business is like a divorce in a way. It's 100% a divorce. And it's actually probably more like a divorce than a breakup of a relationship that's not yeah. a marriage. It's frankly. like you're working together, you're barely having sex, you know, you might as well just- <laughs> Yeah. I mean, the sex is the <laughs> dead bedroom, completely right, right, dead right, right. bedroom. Exactly. Right. And it was just like, okay, we're gr- we're growing apart. Every time I talk about this, it's just more like a marriage, right? We're growing apart. We have different vis- visions for the business. Not, not getting seeing each other's values. Everything. Yeah, not seeing each other's values. And also just like petty stuff kept happening where I was like, okay, come on. Are we going to fight about this thing? And then it just reached a breaking point over a lot of little things that added up, but some of them to me were big things that mm-hmm. would have put me in legal hot water or just like been bad for the fans. Yeah. So- we negotiated a split, amicable, quote unquote, in December. That did not work out as planned for various reasons that were <clears throat> beyond my control, one right. might say. Uh, and then I found myself on the outside of the business and one side saying it's amicable and the other side, which is me, is like, uh, no, it's not amicable. And I was really pissed. And I went through these like stages of grief where it's like, what? You can't do that. And then the I've next one everything. was like sadness and depression. And now I'm like- But now you're standing at the grave cheering. Yeah. I'm just like dancing around going, oh, well, guess I'll just live hella better right now. Yeah. Hell is a NorCal word. It means very. <laughs> and, very uh, nice. Yes. In uh, and the Northeast, it's the, the dip. The dip. Hell of a good dip. Hell of a good dip. Never heard that. What? You guys, you don't know hell of a good dip? No. No? What wow. I Wow. I was saying that assuming you would know. Oh, no. Wow. What is it? From Jersey? It's like a chip. It's a dip for chips. And it's called hell of a no. good dip. Never heard that. Wow. I know dips like the candy. No. You've never heard of a dip before, just in general? Well, dip I've heard of, <laughs> not a hell of a dip. Hell of a good dip. Hell of a good dip. Anyway, no. they're not supporting no. the show, you know, sponsoring the show, yeah. so let's move on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just snip that right That's out right. of My brain's not working today. It's like, screw them. Locked in on these like dips. $1,500 in free sponsorship that we just <laughs> threw out the window. So the, so the show is now the Jordan Harbinger show, which is like the same or better quality than I was able to do on The Art of well, Charm. Now I can control the full thing, right? Now I can control the full thing. And I don't have to be like... Here's an interview with this really cool life-changing or like research person who's invented this amazing thing. Oh, also shoehorn in this like crappy ad for this product or this program. Right. By the way, men only in LA pick up chicks. Uh, and back to this Nobel Prize winning neuroscientist. So what is it now though? If if you're not, it's basically the that's same show. show. It's in many ways, it's it's similar content. So it's it's not the same in that I can do many more interesting things. But I'll still have like a CIA agent will come on and talk about reading people. I'll have Larry King come on and talk about the art of conversation. I'll have neuroscientists come in and talk about what's going on in your brain or someone else's brain when you're trying to convince them something or persuade them. So I can do a little bit higher level while still every episode teaches something 
practical. So I make worksheets now for every episode of the show. So wow. if you listen, you can go, oh, okay, I'm listening in my car. I don't have to pull over and take notes. You can just go get the worksheet, fill it out. But it's only available do to people who live in Germany. So don't switch over from our <laughs> show to start listening to his show. Okay. It's only, if you have to live in Liechtenstein, right. unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. You, look, it's not about as much dating and relationships as much as it is about like- No, but it's lifestyle, being a, a, yeah. a well-rounded person. That's right. And it's for men and women. So there's not a whole, before it was like dudes only. Now it's- it's women as well, which was a, a large part of your audience before. I'm it sure. was, and they listened in spite of cheesy branding, in spite of what we were doing there. So now, looking back at rebuilding, I was like, "Oh, it's going to take me so long to rebuild," and it's still daunting. You know, I was on the top of the podcast mountain for years with four million downloads or whatever each month, and it's been the Jordan Harbinger show has been out for a month, one point three million downloads wow, so far. Amazing. So Can I please come on scared. your goddamn motherfucking show? Yeah, why not? Why not? Please. What are you going to do? You're going to give some advice? Well, I have a show on depression, but my oh. co-host committed suicide, and oh, I'm my God, continuing the podcast, and it's a unique situation that I'm in. That is it's a good show. That is very interesting and very tragic also. When did Incredibly that happen? tragic. July. Jeez. Steve, her name was Stevie Ryan. She was kind of in the public eye. She used to have her own show on VH1. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah. That's really sad. Yeah, it's Holy horrifying. Cow. Yeah, but Kristen's yeah. continued yeah. on with the show and is doing an amazing it's job. It's incredibly and has hard had to do. Wonderful, a wonderful guests. Podcast after <laughs> continuing the same one. I can only imagine. Yeah. I would love to talk more about that. Actually, what's funny, today I'm interviewing Millie Vanilli. No. Yeah. Well, one guy. One of them, right? Exactly. Vanilli. Is he Millie or he, is he Vanilla? That's one of the things that's that I'm going to ask. Him? As like, soon which as I, one are you? Yeah, and I know he's going to be like not funny, but right. Yeah. I mean, but I bet you get. Do you know that all the time? He must. But you know what happened to his co-host? Died. He committed suicide. Committed suicide. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. After the after people shredded him, right? right? They shredded him. They were a joke, and it really wasn't fair. Like researching this interview, which I I spend like a ridiculous amount of time researching each of my interviews. Your show um, is so much better than ours. And, it's well, just I'm different. Just, it's, I'm nerdier. Just, every you know, butterfly like, is beautiful. They're I'm just joking. not all the I'm same. I'm way better than you. <laughs> you I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it was. They were totally effed over by. Yes. The I saw like the VH1 special on them. Yeah. I watched it. It was really interesting. They got yeah. totally fucked over. Imagine being 18 and this guy's like, I'm going to make you famous. I'm going to make you a trillionaire, yes. But the contract is in Chinese. Yeah. You can't read it. But here's a briefcase full of cash. And by the way, you're totally going to get laid a bunch. Right. Yeah, where do we yeah, sign? Yeah, why do you say no? And then they're like, oh, you're not singing. And they're like, great, we'll just dance. Girl, and you then know it, it's, girl, you know yeah. it's, girl, you know it's. Yeah, that's the repeat. Yeah, and, and then it's and well, then interesting. Yeah, so, yeah, we're, so, so we're it is talking so about tragic. getting screwed over here, which right. happens a lot to the guys who are listening to this show. They feel yeah. like they got screwed over by women, screwed over by society, screwed over by other men, and so from both of you, because you kind of got got screwed over as well, not intentionally, well, but yeah. but I've been screwed over. In other but ways, yes, too. And, and, we, and we all have. What are the ways to deal? with being screwed over? Like, how do you rebuild yourself? How have you been rebuilding yourself? Yeah, so I'll tell you what's in saving my ass is the relationships that I built over time. Because when you get your butt handed to you like I did, you have your skills when you leave, like what you've built yourself. You have your team maybe that's around you if you if there's anybody left. I was fortunate to leave with the vast majority of the Art of Charm team for the Jordan Harbinger show, but that's not always the case. Right. And your network, your relationships, which actually you could probably put team under there. And so what I did first was cry about it for like a minute and then go, okay, I've got to make a choice here. I can either hide all of this and like maintain my cool image or whatever. And I think that's what the the other guys were hoping I was going to do. And that, I don't think they even thought about you to be they, honest. They probably didn't even. Nah, you're right. And so that's like a five-year recovery, right? If you, don't, if you try, try to do it all yourself. Or... I can come out guns blazing, tell everybody kind of what happened, lean on my network and email everybody that I can and tell them what's going on and ask for help. Which And that's fascinating to people in general. But how do you correlate that to somebody who is going through the same thing when it comes to a breakup yeah. or a relationship? Do you, do you suggest that they do the same thing within their network? or what? what, what is yeah, I would say that, that that's probably a really good idea because I think what a lot of guys do is they go, oh, crap. If I tell my parents, my friends, my coworkers or colleagues or whatever, the people that you know, what you're going through, what I'm going through, are they gonna they're gonna judge me in some way? So there's an element of shame, which is not sure. helpful at all. Because even if your mom or your dad or someone close to you is like, I knew that girl was no good, so what? The, 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 right. What? It's like you were still dumped. 
Right, you were still yeah. dumped. And yeah. you still love that person or care for that person. Of course, and what your mom or whoever's close to you is saying, they're not like, you're an idiot, I told you so. They're probably like, God, I knew this was going to happen and I tried I to protect, I protect you, you, but I can't. So once you get that out of the way, most people are not going to do the I told you so. A few people were like, oh, I saw this coming, but they weren't like, ah, oh, you're so stupid. They were just like, hey, how did this happen? Because I'm a, an attorney, and the truth is, there was not a whole lot of legal stuff I could have done to avoid this because if someone's not going to honor an agreement, right. they're going to just... And then what? You can sue somebody that may not ever be able to... There's Pay back. Right. Yeah, there's something called judgment proof. If you're driving around LA and you get hit by somebody who doesn't have insurance in a car that's worth $300, you are paying for the damages. One way or another, yeah, they're wrong. Okay, and what? Do you want to replace your car? Do you want medical attention? Right. Get out your checkbook. That's what happens. That's judgment proof. And I can't really say anything about my former business being that way because that would be speculation in a way that's unfair and possibly legally actionable. Mm-hmm. However, if you get dumped or something, so what? If you, if, so what if everyone told you that? Maybe you learned a lesson or maybe those people were just wrong in the first place. But it doesn't matter. You have to get... Don't let shame and ego be part of the calculation because it's going to take you so much longer to recover. You don't tell your friends. They can't hang out with you. They can't make you feel better. Now you're just alone because you don't want to be embarrassed on top of it. Plus, shame is healthy and it gives you character. But before we started taping, I said, Mm. I think the universe points you in that direction. So it it almost breaks up the the relationship for you. You were not supposed to be together. It was not the right decision or the right thing. And so it pushed you in a direction that you were supposed to go but might have not gone if it but weren't you, for the you universe. You should basically only know that after the fact. After, you don't of course. usually know that while you're going no. through it, but but reminding yourself of that while you're going through it could be very helpful as well. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with that. And I also think that a lot of guys, well, guys and girls, but especially for our purposes here, guys will, they'll be in a relationship and then it, it ends and they're like, it's so sudden. It's like, well, wait a minute. Look back at everything. You're not supposed to have seen the red flags right in front of you. It's great if you can, but usually this is just 2020 hindsight. Right. It's really supposed to be that way. That's why they say 2020 hindsight because really you have so much clarity looking back in the timeline. You don't have the ability especially when you're young in your 20s or even in your 30s for that matter, just now that I'm 38 years old, I can look back and go, god, I'm still stupid. I'm still even now totally inept when it comes to so many things, right? You're going to be for the You're rest of your life. You're supposed to be. Yeah. You're going to be 85 and be like, God, I'm so up there? dumb. Yeah. So you're supposed to look back at your choices and go, all right. And if you got one lesson from a relationship, that is a win. So don't beat yourself up because that's part of that sort of shame spiral where you're like, oh, not only am I embarrassed and alone, but I'm, I'm this, this means something about myself and oh, I should have- It must be me. It happened to me once or exactly. five times before. Yeah. Or, or like, I should have seen it when she was going on all those business trips that she was cheating on me. It's like, well, no, a lot of people go on business trips and they're not cheating on you. And right. it's sometimes okay to not, to, to have a, like a optimistic outlook on people. Like yes. they, they're not doing the wrong thing all the time. Uh, but, when I, when I had, I've had so many roommates and so many of them <laughs> have ended awfully. And I'm like, is it me? Like, am I this common de- denominator that like I am a bad roommate? But it's really the genuinely the scenario is that they're the shitheads. And you, Jordan, you were saying that earlier. It was mm-hmm. like, you, you know, you're like, is it me? No, no, no. Or they're it's a combination actually combination of the two people together. No, it's really genuinely. <laughs> you're like, no, it's 100%. No, I'm not, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not kidding. And I am always hard on myself. But this, I'm super honest. One girl was bulimic, almost started a fire, wouldn't answer my phone calls. And I was as nice as pie. The other girl, we are great together. And then when she moved out, she fucked me over and basically stole my money. So it's like, it, all those scenarios, that has nothing to do with me. So basically what I'm trying to say is the if these dudes are in a relationship and they're continually getting fucked over, they're not necessarily to blame or doing anything wrong. It's like you're putting yourself with the wrong people who will do bad things. Yeah. So it's like- Do you agree with that? In a way, Sometimes, not every scenario. Sure. But it's possible. Some of it's judgment though, and it means that, but but having bad judgment doesn't make you a bad person. And I want to separate that because I think a lot of guys go- okay, it's something about me. And it's like, well, maybe you tolerate stuff or maybe you don't see things in advance. But the answer to your situation, for example, is not, well, I just, I'm just not going to have roommates now. I mean, that, was un, that would be untenable. But 
I've had tons of roommates. Some of them were great and some of them weren't so great. It's the general population has people that are not going to be healthy or that are just going to be in a situation of their own making or of, of another where they're put in a desperate situation and they do something like screw with your money or screw with your your heart if it's a relationship. Mm-hmm. And people are not generally bad, but if you're attracting a ton of bad people in your life, some of it is because you don't have the right boundaries. Right. And for me, I've been in business for going on 12 years and I've had bad business partners and breakups in the past. And I looked, I, I mean, very hard on myself as well, like you guys are. And one of the things that was hard for me was it's like, God, what is wrong with me? Like, what am I doing wrong? And uh, asked a lot of friends, was very open about it, started talking to a lot of other entrepreneurs and they're like, let me tell you how I got fired by my best friend after 12 years of making a $180 million company. And like everyone had these same story. breakups and these same stories. If you're in business for long enough and you put money on the table, you're going to have people who disappoint you. And this will even happen in families. So if it's happening yeah. with a you know a girlfriend, it's you know of course yeah. it's going to happen. Like my dad was in business for 40 years with my uncle, and not that it ended terribly, but like it wasn't a fair situation mm. when they ended it. And they're brothers, right? You know, so it will happen yeah, to your it can girlfriend happen or boyfriend. It doesn't exactly. It doesn't correlate to who you are as a person. Which right I think is the message from both of you is that it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. Do you suggest that, like as you were saying before, you reach out to your friends and you start telling them what's going on to yeah. see if there's like common stories? Would you suggest that moving forward from a breakup, if guys are going out on dates or if they're meeting new people or new women, do they? share this experience? Um, like, and if they do share this experience of going through a breakup, how do they share that? Yeah. So that it still puts them in a good light. Sure. So And not bitter. The answer is, yeah. yeah, share it, but not on the first date or whatever. You might say, yeah, I just went through a breakup recently and it's pretty rough, dot, 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 whatever. But don't you don't want to talk about this as a subject of your first date. If it's just, yeah, when was your last, if it comes up casually, when was your last relationship? Yeah, it was six months ago. It actually ended pretty rough. Was not, was rough for me for a while. Like you can be honest and vulnerable, but don't spend the next 45 minutes being like, and then she cheated on me again. And then she, we made up. Like, it just makes you sound like a crazy. It to me. Yeah. It just makes you sound bitter and crazy. Right. It does. So, but I'm a big fan of being open and vulnerable with friends and Can you tell me what that means? Yeah. So like I said, when I, originally had this issue, I was upset and embarrassed for like a minute. And by that, I mean like a day. I think I called my parents and whined about it. And they're like, well, yeah, this this stuff happens in your life. You're just going to have to get up and deal with it. And then I started calling close friends and I realized, because I was like, oh, these people are going to be kind when they deliver like the news that I'm an idiot, right? And they're like, no, this is unfair. You're a good person. What you create is good. You have hundreds of thousands of people listen to your show. They like what you're doing. You're going to be able to do that again. They can't take that part away from you. You have all these relationships. And I sort of like worked my way from my inner circle to my outer circle where I knew that the first like 20 people I asked for help rebuilding weren't going to be like, oh, you suck. You're dead to me now. You don't have a platform. They all would say yes. And that was very helpful for me because I knew that if those 20 people were had my back, I wouldn't be like completely out in the cold. And so those first 20 people were super helpful and that gave me the courage to ask hundreds of other people and tell the story. And out of those hundreds of people, there's only a couple of people who are like, oh man, all right, I was talking with so-and-so and we're just like, how did you let this happen? And then by really? that point, by that point though, you don't feel bad about no, it. you don't care. Because you're like, oh, well, this is just like, they're not handling this in a very socially adept way. Because the other 100 people I talked to about this were like caring, compassionate. Yeah. These are just guys that aren't doing it. But even then, it doesn't make them bad. You just go, ah, they're probably having a laugh at my expense because we're sort of frenemies or whatever. But the, those same people still were like, yeah, come back on my show, man. You know, we're like air quotes rivals, but you don't really want to see somebody who's like your friendly rival get completely knocked out of the game no. because it's not good. It's just not good for your industry. You do like them even when you're like, you want to win. You don't want them to get blown up and then you're like the only person yeah. doing this. It yeah, it's like sense. if you're an athlete and all of a sudden you're the only athlete left because everyone else has lost their legs. It's yeah. Like, yeah, you're like, well, this is not no fun, fun anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's not enjoyable. Yeah, exactly. It's not enjoyable. And yes, it's business, but you're not making any more money because I'm not because I'm out of the game or something, right? You do realize at some level, unless you're a really amateur player or of business, that the more good people are in your industry, the better off you are. So you really don't want somebody who you're kind of competing with 
to be completely gone. Right. Like Lewis Howes and I have a similar angle, but he's more like inspirational self help, and That's I'm more. That's so heady. funny. I never heard of him before, and I, somebody just showed me his website the other day. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't. So I don't. I still don't really know who he is. Yeah, I only know him from What's his, his name? website. He was Lewis on Ellen. That's Lewis all I know. Ha- Lewis House is his name. Yeah, he's a friend of mine. But like, we're sort of competitive. But we're competitive guys. But when I asked him for help, he was like, "Well, I don't." And he's like, "Yeah, okay, fine." But when he needs something, I'm always like, "Okay, yeah, of course." You have a new book. Come on the show. So even when we're like, "Oh, I got an Ellen," you didn't. He didn't say that to me, by the way. But it's kind of like that. He got he, an he's Ellen. Like, yeah, I got an Ellen. Oh, got on Ellen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, he I did? got on Ellen. Wow. He was no, on no. Ellen. That's all I know. He went on Ellen show. Right. Wow. But, but like wow. other other victories that we have, it's like, okay, well, I got on the Tony Robbins show, and he's like, hey, how did that happen? I'm like, all right, I'll ask for you, even though I'm enjoying my sort of victory here. Well, you know, you have to always have the long game in mind. Yes. Yeah. Like what. Down the road, it might not help you or serve you in this moment, but down the road, what's the big picture? Okay, so how does this correlate to guys who are going through breakups or right. not even breakups who have gone through continuous rejections from women? What's the plan of attack for them? Yeah, I think for when you look at this, you were right. You got to look at the timeline. The further you zoom out in your life, or in this is business, relationships, whatever the more you can see a path that's clear, right? So for me, this whole business breakup thing was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? But if you zoom out far enough, I realize, all right, I did a, a show for 11 years. I'm doing a new show. 11 years, I'm 38 right now. I'm, I'm probably like 20, 25% of the way through my career as a talk show host, right? An interviewer. Yeah. That's really not that, the first bit of any career is like the lame point. This is mail room. Right, you're in the mm-hmm. mail room. Yeah. So the art of charm for me was the mail room. Now it's like, hey, you're finally good enough to put out something that people don't think blows. Right? If so you're in the mail good. room, we're in the gutter. Well, no, but, but like, <laughs> that's not true. No, I'm kidding. But you know what I'm saying, right? Like this is the beginning of a career. You're supposed to have these radical changes. You're supposed to jump ship. If you're working as uh, if you're waiting tables and then you get stages at the improv, the waiting tables was the mail room. That was the right. beginning of your career. You're supposed to have a shitty beginning. Totally. Right? It yeah. happens. So if you're going through breakups and rejections, even if you're 38 years old, zoom out far enough on the timeline, and these are lessons that you learn about yourself and other people, about what you do want, what you don't want, what you'll tolerate, and what you won't. It's normal. Yeah. And use them and, when you go into your next scenario yes. so that you can, you're not going into it saying, okay, take me, take me, take me, let me be a podcast host somewhere. Right. You're saying, okay, I'm an established podcast host who has gone through all of these, exp- or mm-hmm. dating person who's gone through all of these experiences. Now, what do I want to allow into my life? And right. the same thing with podcast podcasting or same thing with being a comedian, whatever it is, you can stand with confidence instead of standing like a pauper well, begging I'll, for money. You're also, saying, confident saying, this is what I want. How are we going to make this happen? Also, when you're looking at the long game or the big picture, you're not as petty or nitpicky about the daily little things. So say a girl does something that bothers you. If you look at the long game, you, this isn't the girl you're going to end up with anyway. So you're yeah. not going to focus and, and not let go of what she did. You're going to quickly eat more easily move on because you know the end game is not her. Yeah, for sure. I, I, w- I would imagine, I'm trying to think of like some of my last, re- well, actually, I easily remember some of my past breakups and I'm going, and you all, we all have this. You go, what was I thinking dating that person for longer than like one minute? How did, I, I mean, I knew that this person was not a fit for me. What was I doing? And then if you're a guy, you're like, well, the sex. But if you're a woman, I don't know. There's other reasons. Well, right? it is crazy what hits you this morning. So I had an ulcer on my eye like a year ago, which oh, is just so- that sounds super painful. It was the worst. Gross. It was the worst thing <laughs> you ever. Stop putting your eye on public toilet seats. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, the pube, a pube hair got stuck in there and then it just corroded my eye. Oh. No, no, basically I think my contact damaged my eye and yeah. then it- what, what like turned into an ulcer. Through, yeah, holy mountain. But I was reflecting because I was back at that doctor two days ago because I was feeling like I had sandy grit in my eye. But when I was at that doctor the first time, I was in a very bad position dating wise with mm. this guy I was obsessed with. And when I was at the doctor, this was a year ago, uh, with this pain, my eye was basically swollen shut. I couldn't see, I couldn't like drive, I couldn't do anything. I looked, but I could look at my Instagram, of course. And I, I mean, right. You, yeah. Of course, I'm going to figure out survive. a way to do that. So I look at my Instagram and I see that guy that I'm like in love with basically is tagged in a picture with another girl. Oh, dude. And I like lost, you know, it was the worst. And then I went to the doctor a couple of days ago. I'm a year out from that feeling. Well, I'm not completely a year, but pretty close. And I was, so I was th- reflecting on it because I was at the doctor again in the same position going, oh my God, how is this me? How was this me? How did I 
let this guy make me get this screwed up when yeah. it was not the right, it was so wrong. Well, actually, and so, so take a so pause nice for one second. Being outside I, of Jordan it. was saying before, you know, for guys, they stick in it because of sex. What, what 99% is, the, what of is the, time. the equivalent for you? Like, what, looking back at it now, what was it about him that made you stick that out? I, it, the stick only thing out. I can come up with is that I wanted his approval. Yeah, yeah. validation. Yeah, yeah, that's all it was. Because I knew we weren't connecting soul wise. We weren't, we didn't have that much in common. You know, like, the, it would, did you know that? Because I don't remember you saying that at the time. I did know that, but I wouldn't say it because I was so attracted to him and I wanted it to work out so badly. Mm-hmm. But now looking back on it, it's like that, you know, zoom out thing. Right. Exactly. Your doctor's like, like, holy shit, what an idiot. You cried a lot and you're also healed. This is amazing. You must have cried a whole lot. That's <laughs> exactly. a really good solution. Yeah. You're like, yeah, thanks. Guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ninety five dollars. My own tears cured it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So so basically, yeah, the bigger picture. It's always the the whole timeline zoom out thing has been huge for me, not even just with this particular business thing, but looking at every successful person's career. Everybody who has had something really good or really bad happen to them, you can really cure it with perspective, I think is like the Definitely. cliche. Yeah. And people say, get some perspective, but they don't tell you how to do that. And the way that you do that is you look back at where you were five, one, five, ten years ago, and then where you think you might be in the future. And you can daydream or whatever, it doesn't matter. But if you look backwards, which is the only way you can really see clearly, you go, well, wait a minute. I'm, I've, oh, I lost so much when I did this business breakup. And it's like, well, actually, if, and Facebook is great for this. You ever go and it's like four I mean, years timeline. ago and you're like, holy shit, one, I was fat. <laughs> How did I do it? I lost 35 pounds from walking and not eating shit, by the way, in like the last walking? year. That's great. Walking around yeah, and not I, eating I shit. I said that when you walked, I'm like, yeah, oh, I, good. And I, and I look back and I was like, I don't remember thinking, wow, I'm a chub, but I totally what? lost a bunch of weight. <laughs> so I'm like, huh, I guess I could stand to lose a little bit. So you look back at, at Facebook stuff and you go, it's like, oh my God, I built, I did 900 shows with The Art of Charm. Now I've got you know, 18 or 20 with The Jordan Harbinger Show. But I look at interviews I did three years ago and I go, how did this guy get on my show? I would never interview this person. This person is not up to snuff. And then two years ago, and then one year ago, I'm like, oh, these are starting to get good now. And I went back and I was like, I got to figure out which guests I want to re-interview for The Jordan Harbinger Show. There were like seven not out 700. Of, right, out of all those Out hundreds. of 900, there were like were 7 or tw- 20, <laughs> something like that. You, yeah, of course you're going to be on the list. Nice. Come on, people. We're number six. Were we, number six. were we on your show? I don't even think that ever did happen. I was no, on your we, show a couple yeah, of times. I, I don't think were. we were on no, your right, right. show. I've never been on a show. Although you recorded yeah. in a studio. Did you not do a show that time? It's because Jordan was doing my oh, show. Our sh- oh, right, right, right. That's right. Gotcha. Interesting. Or our okay, show, so not, but you weren't there. But I was there. That's right. That was your show. With Michael Costa. Oh, That's yeah. right, because I was like, how, I remember recording with Michael Costa, but there's no interview with Michael Costa in my show feed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when did that, was, that happen? That was ours, but Marnie was, was gone. That's yeah, right. There. I forgot about that. And that was at the old house. Yeah, I actually would love to have you guys come on sometime and do Feedback Friday where we answer listener questions okay. because a lot, I get a lot of stuff. That dating is, probably still? There's, there's, very, there's only a little bit of dating stuff in there, but there's a ton of... Okay, I need to be a woman to answer this. Perfect. There's we will come back on the show and answer questions. And yes. actually, we're going to take a break right now and then come back and answer questions with you. Perfect. Want advice and step-by-step instructions on how to get the girl sent right into your mailbox every single day? Then sign up for your free Wing Girl Method newsletter at winggirlmethod.com slash advice. When you sign up, you'll also get a free copy of my best-selling book, 10 Devastating Mistakes Men Make With Women and How to Avoid Them. Go to winggirlmethod.com slash advice and sign up now. Want to know the hidden meaning behind what women say and do? Then check out the Chictionary. It's the Wing Girl Methods manual that gives you a full rundown of all the things women say that confuse men written in dictionary format. Go get a copy of the Chictionary by going to winggirlmethod.com slash chick. That's winggirlmethod.com slash chick. Hey, so we're back. We're going to do some questions. <laughs> Enthusiastic <laughs> return. Well, it's, I, I never, know, we never we know never how know, to do this because like, we don't right. actually take a real break. So yeah. it's so weird. What you don't do the reads in line, huh? No, we, we insert them. I don't either. Yeah. I always do. And, and they're like, you have to do live reads. And I go, great. Prove that this isn't a live read. Oh, yeah. you can prove <laughs> that ours is not a live yeah, read. Yeah, because it's like, you. I would, I would like garage. to. 
like interweave them. I, we're just not on it as the way they, uh-huh. that you are. We we pre-record our shows. Plus there's yeah. two so of us harder. and we're distant. It's not like we're like business partners necessarily so we're not like always working together. We're just making excuses. We can make this so we much could. better. I, pre- like I was going to say, I pre-record my shows like a month or two in advance. I'm like, how do you do this shit? So because he- I have a couch that I need to be laying on and yeah. like a dog that needs like petting. petting. <laughs> Lots yeah, of petting. I pre-record the show and then you do, you get the ads from the sponsors yeah. like on Monday. Right. We don't get them like that, though. No. When do you get them? Whenever they choose to send it in, saying, can you record this in an hour? Oh, yeah. So we go, no. Sorry, it's not going to make it. So we make them slot them in in advance, or I won't run it. But they still have to pay. See? there. Wow. Oh, but you go straight from the sponsor. We had a network in between. So the sponsor would go to them. So no, they I got had a network. Time. I'm on Podcast One. Oh, but they give you the... T- well, then... Our- I told them if it's not in by Monday or Tuesday... Yeah, we told them that the too, show. and then they said, great, don't be on our network. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Said, okay. <laughs> so maybe you have to measure how long your wang is before you throw it on the table. Yeah. And if you or don't have a wang at we all. Just said, I just, the we, table. we pre-recorded our shows. I'm sorry. We, we need a couple of weeks. And now that we're dealing directly with sponsors, yeah. I know that they can give it yeah. two to three weeks before. And they the sponsors have been really nice about doing that. Saying, yeah. yeah, we'll definitely give you two weeks lead time. That's good. Because it's harder. I feel like if we had like a million downloads, they would get yeah, them to us Yeah, they'd be like, sure, them. you can yeah. have a month in advance, yeah. not oh, a yeah. problem. Speaking of, of sponsors and stuff like that, I'm doing my own personal read right now. Please go listen to my podcast, my personal podcast called Mentally Chill. Chill. Wow. Mm, the ILLs and Great parentheses. Great title. And, uh, Soon to be called The Christian Carney Show. Yeah, because I'm going to kick myself out of my own partnership. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, like, damn God. you, Kristen. All right, now I have to do the Kristen Now I know why you have roommate problems. You can't even get along with yourself. <laughs> there you go. That is a really good point. Uh, so anyway, go do that. And Marnie and... I are somewhat, like I said, we're not like business partners, but I am doing some stuff for Marnie through her business right now. So if you want me to analyze your profile, rewrite your profile. Yeah. Uh, Go sign up for uh, my profile analysis on my website, winggirlmethod.com, and then I'll pass you over to Christian. I saw the reports that you've been giving to people. They're much more detailed than what I gave. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> so they you're are. you're getting your bang, so you bang might, for your buck for it. But I'm not getting my bank for my buck. Nope. That took me a long time. It did? Yeah, two, ho- two hours. To what? Sit down. Yes. Did you see how beautifully done that was? It was. That would have taken me 20 minutes. So that was like... <laughs> <laughs> it took you two hours. not her but fault. But that's yeah. why mine's so much better than yours. I'm, Mine is still pretty damn good. <laughs> Mine's better. Yours is just organized differently, but that was really good. Thank you. Yeah, anyway, so if you... Or you can just go to... You want to get me Christian up super Email cheap. me at Kate. <laughs> shit, I just had my email address. Sorry, you got me to cut Cut out the middleman. Cut, shit. <laughs> Personal email. Anyway, that's hey my, guys. That's my email address. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nobody, hey, guys. Thank you that. so much for all the info you put out there. I've been binge consuming this type of material in the past months. Uh, listened to AOC, hated it. I'm just joking. <laughs> I was like, um, I don't see that on joking. your screen. And your stuff is super far ahead from the rest in terms of quality, sensibility, and intelligence. Hmm. If I, this is from a 17-year-old. If I remember <laughs> correctly, real? no. Okay. If I remember correctly, you once mentioned that there's something sexy about guys that are not looking for commitment. This blew my mind and it's something I'm willing to try to spend some time dating just for the sake of meeting different people. I'm just coming out of a 12 year marriage. So this is perfect. uh, And I never thought I could be honest about being in a phase where I want to meet multiple people. Mm back to what we were saying before, yeah. being honest with the people that are around you. I'm 35 and I didn't really date much before my marriage. Suppose I'm having multiple first dates every month. Is it a mistake to talk about those? How specific should I be about my dating life given that I'm not ready for a long-term relationship? See, Thanks a lot and keep up the good work, Ivan. My beef with that, so the guy I was referring to a little while ago, he did not indicate that he wasn't looking for a long-term relationship because he was- What? He, no, he didn't. Let me finish. Okay. Because he did. Before Mm. the first date. And so I went into it. We met on Bumble. I went into it going, okay, this could be a relationship. Right. And what what, what did he he say that indicated he did want a relationship? The fact that he's on Bumble meeting women. You have to assume the platform you're on. If you're on a dating site, the majority of women on there are are on there to find a boyfriend. And mm. the majority of men might not be. Okay. So I don't think it's fair to meet someone that is definitely looking for something long-term because you're going to be wasting her time. So, so you're, you're assuming that he knew because you were on Bubble you were looking for a serious relationship? Absolutely. And you were looking for a serious relationship right after your last relationship? That's where you were at? It wasn't right after. It was about a year after or no. 10 months, nine months. Yeah. It was 10 months after you? Yeah. That you were on there? Okay, so that's when you jumped to Bumble because you're like, now I'm ready? Yeah. Okay, so you never used Bumble not really knowing if you were ready. I, it depended on the person. If I had met the right person, 
if it was two weeks after my re- last relationship, I would have dated them. You, oh, right. Absolutely. You would have been in a relationship, but yeah. you were open I'm to not, being open. Because I don't think it's fun to just go on dates with dudes and like have job interviews like once a week. To me, that's not fun. I'm only on a dating site if I'm looking for something real and or legit. Do you believe that the majority of women are doing the same thing? Yeah. The majority really? of women. Do you believe that? I'm not sure. I'm I think sure. it varies I think, I think with it men varies and women. Because yeah. there's a lot of guys I know that are like, Looking for relationships on there. There are and definitely lots of girls some. who are not, and there are lots of girls who are like, "How big is your dick?" I'm, I'm just not I'm, kidding. I'm just no, saying. we just went out for dinner the other night, and this one guy who um, is like 45 years old, and he was talking about his friend who's recently out of a relationship, and he's going on online dates all the time, and he's like, "But he come, he keeps running into the same situation. All these women who just got out of relationships mm-hmm. who aren't looking to get into a next serious relationship, so they just give blowjobs. They don't have sex, so they don't want to have <laughs> That's sex. Totally terrible. okay with that. Right. Terrible. But then I was like, "Yeah, what are you complaining about?" But he was saying. That was like the, the situation he was running into was that it was just g- girls who didn't want to get serious. So they weren't having sex with anybody. So I, my point is, is that I think there's a lot of women on there who all, and so definitely, Bumble, Bumble. of course, of course, definitely. But I would say the majority, I would say 70% of the women on there are probably looking for a relationship you can assume. Okay. And be, and so this guy didn't state outright that he's yeah. also. I'm just dating around. It would be fun to just go f- out for a night. Like something to just let me know because my my uh, emotions got so wrapped up in him right from the get go, and if I had maybe known that or prepped myself, it wouldn't have been such a devastating situation that I got myself. Well, most into. likely, you wouldn't have gone on out with him then. No, I wouldn't have, and I didn't think he right. was that cute in the picture. So it was like if he had said, "Well, I'm not really looking for anything serious," I would have been like, "Okay, cool. Let's yeah. what are that's your not me." On that? I always think being honest is better, but that's a. If you're thinking about lying about something, it's a, it's what we call like a scarcity mindset, right? Like, well, if I'm honest, she's not going to want to go out with me. And I say, good, screen in somebody who's not going to be pissed off right. because you misrepresented yourself. But most guys are like, I'm not going to give away that I just want to bang and like, you know, leave. Exactly. What's the happy medium for that then? So this, so this is to answer Ivan's question. Like, how much yeah. do you divulge? Well, because the thing is, is that you can reveal where you're at by things that you say. Like, for example, this guy said to you, I just got divorced. Or no, I'm not even divorced. Not yeah, and then, then, and then like, I was like, a, oh. That's a, he didn't tell me that before we met. So shady. That's very common. He, but, to, to date before you get... Well, I don't... Our div- divorces take a long ass time, right? Yeah. So you're kind of Some like, people can take like 20 years. So before we yes. met, before we met, the information was I saw a couple pictures of a woman from his Instagram and I was like, oh, he had a, an ex-girlfriend. So I said that to him. He didn't say no. He said, well, we'll talk about it in person. So going into it, I didn't know that that was actually his wife and they had just split up. Oh man! So that information wasn't revealed until I met him on the date. But I will say on the backside of that is that a lot of guys who are currently separated or a lot of women who are currently separated have a lot of difficulty dating because they'll say, I'm separated, not divorced. But for them, separated means I'm divorced from this woman. I'm not going to be with her. There just happen to be situations that have me tied to yeah, this woman legal still. Stuff, yeah. yeah, money, kids, whatever it is that has them still tied. And so, and they have difficulty in moving forward because women are like, no, I'm not going to date you until you're, you're fully divorced. So mm-hmm. it, it's, it's, it's a tricky area for a yeah, lot of people. Definitely. But so going back to Ivan, do you think that he starts saying to women, yeah, like I went on four dates this week. Like how much does he reveal? That's too about, much because yeah. because the thing is, nobody wants to feel like, oh good, I'm date number five and yeah. you don't care and you're not serious about this at all and you don't know what you want. It's, yeah. it's one thing to say, I'm dating right now because I'm just trying to figure out what I want and I'm not sure if I'm going to commit. Because you really, the truth is, you don't know if you're going to fall into a relationship Sometimes you think, I'm probably not because I just got out of a marriage, but you don't really know if you're going to meet somebody that you really like. So you can say that. You can say, look, I'm not sure what I'm up for right now. I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit more casual. And yeah, some women are going to go, no thanks, I'm trying to have babies ASAP. That's not a good person for right. you. And it's fine to do that because those apps have tens of thousands of women on them and like we yeah, just exactly. yeah. like Marnie said, there are women just looking to give BJ's. So yeah. I think where were they when that, I was dating? You'll God. still oh, that's what I was saying. I'm like, what app is he using? Yeah, I just don't think news it's, to me. I just don't think it's kind to waste people's time for it's your not. own. You're right. no, for your I, own I, purposes. I, I, I but I don't agree. think it's wrong to just date around. Of course, no, I think it's fine to be casual. It, it's kind of what you said as well. Like if somebody 
strikes that for me, then I will be in a relationship with them. But for right now, nothing's happening and I'm okay meeting a whole bunch of people to see what it is I like and what I don't like. And I think that's totally fine. So my my husband used to have a line when women would say to him, because I think the real question is, what do I say when they ask it? I Mm -hmm. wouldn't say like you sit down here today, you're like, hey, I was here last week. (laughs) You know, Cindy, it was great. (laughs) Like you don't don't get the calamari and shit. You you can talk talk about like, oh God, how weird have your dates been from this? If you want to talk on that Topic, oh, I love do that. It very I would always bring that up. It'd be like, so how's Bumble been going? Yeah. 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 So you and can, then you can share some like horror stories and some nice stories as well. But like, always paint the picture that eh, that didn't really work out. But yeah. I'm lucky to move forward. Like, oh, it's it's been good so far. Except every, d- <laughs> every damn guy that I punch. date, they're all like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's that a better joke than what I was going to do. I'm just going to drop it. <laughs> Did you say the blowjob one? Yeah. 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 I just I missed the one. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> execute it right, and he still said it was, <laughs> yeah, it was better. I didn't. So have his must been really shitty. Yeah, it was shit. But I think so. What my husband would say is that when women would bring up like, are you dating anybody else? Because the, th- the truth is, is that right now you have to assume everybody is dating somebody yeah. else, if not five other people because of all these apps out there. And he would say, typically on the second or third date, because that, that's when it would come up. I forget exactly what the line is, but he'd look at them and he'd say, uh, yeah, the truth is, is that I, I am dating out there. My goal is to meet somebody special, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really enjoying what's going on between the two of us right now, and I'd like to see where it goes. That's great. That's yeah. super mature. That's that's the honest answer. Yes, there are other people out there, but you're freaking awesome, and yeah. like, let's continue doing this. How did you find out that that was what he was doing? Because I asked him once, because somebody wrote into me saying, like, how do I tell him? Yeah. I'm like, what was your line? He's like, oh, I forget what I said. And then he said, oh, this is what I said. And then I was like, great, yeah. that's perfect. I that's really that. good. That's really good. My husband, he tells me stories about like, this is pre-texting, pre-Tinder and Bumble, all that stuff. Like him and his friends would rehearse messages that they would leave for girls so they would get it down to the On the the answering machine? Yes. So they would know exactly that. Like he would say, okay, how does this? And he's like, and and his friends would say, don't say that word. Mm. Say it this way instead so that it could, I don't know. So it's on a post-it note somewhere. Yeah, exactly. He has like all these things written down. Him and his friend Adam were going to make a book at some point, which is funny that he ended up meeting me afterwards. Right. He's like, hey, Adam, He's nobody like, uses answering machines anymore. Yeah, Adam exactly. Married. See yeah, you later. Exactly. It's not going to work anymore. Uh, but that that's like the line to say, Ivan. I think like if I wouldn't outright say I'm dating tons of girls, but yeah. you can hint at it a little bit. Sure. And then you can also use it as a way to spark a fire under her. It, exactly. She happens to be interested in you. So talk about what you're looking for, but don't you don't have to talk about your... And you can talk about your level of commitment or whatever you think you're willing to do, but you don't have to talk about the 700 other people that you've met right. through Tinder and how they all suck and they're all boring and it's, it's not you, it's them, right? Like that's, Yeah, exactly. Or like, hey, you're totally not special. I've been here six times this week. I Once my... Uh, back in the day, my roommate, he used to be such a player... And he and I tried to learn from him and couldn't because I was just hopeless. But he would go to this bodega in the morning to get like a I don't know some sort of juice or something after sleeping with a girl. And this shopkeeper one day I was with him. It was him and this girl, and it was like the shopkeeper goes, "You every day different girl." <laughs> oh, and he's like, it. "Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> really cool. Love yeah, it." That's hilarious. And the girl, I feel like every bodega guy does that. God, the girl turned as red as this little plastic car. That yeah. Or yeah, or if you're not a player and you want to be one, go in there, tell the dude to say that. To say to that, you. exactly. And then, but even though it's not light true, a fire under only around all your friends, though. Like, hey, man, oh, you come in once with no girl. Very <laughs> yeah, 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 surprised. Yeah, exactly. Seriously. Yeah. If he wants you to keep buying your chips from there, he's going to say whatever right. you want to say. You're here without your cat again. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're here always with here friends. with your cat. Oh, this time you bring not the rubber woman. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You have friends. Uh, hello, Ask Women and Guest. I have only started listening to your podcast recently and really like them. I must say that you guys are doing a great job by making the podcast funny, engaging, and informative. Aww. Good on you. Nice. I am in my early 30s and I have been separated now for three years. I have never been into dating as I grew up in a country where arranged marriages are very common. Mm. I have now migrated to Australia and since my short-lived marriage has broken down, I'm looking to learn dating and hopefully find my girl, which Maybe seems you should impossible. go back to arranged marriages if yours <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> which seems impossible right now, but I'm going to have uh, to give it all I've got. I have two questions for you. I have a lot of pores scarring from my teenage years all over my face. And sometimes I wonder if any girl would ever want me. I have tried some treatments, but they are only, uh, they're very expensive without much results. How do I get a girl to like me despite this flaw? Well, first, before we go into the real advice, micro needling. It's really good for acne scars. 
Really? Yeah. Huh. And that's what my roommate just had done, and her skin does look really, really good. What is it? It's horrifying. It's basically they just stab you with a gajillion it, needles. It just sounds all over your horrible. Face. There's a whole bunch of micro micro needling. Yeah, but Oof. it heals pretty quickly. So she got it like a week ago, and, and her, she used to have like the pock marks. She had some. She has some, or had some, but now I mean I'm, I haven't looked super close, but it does look a lot better. And I know they primarily do use it for acne scarring. Okay, well that's interesting. So there's one possible solution for yeah. you. Um, I will say one thing. Do you, did, do you ever watch Grease growing up? Of course. Okay. Oh, oh, pizza face. No, wait, the, the bad guy. Yeah, pizza face. Oh, well, they that's call, not a good way to call him. <laughs> I know, but that's, I think, what they call him in the, in the movie. But, damn. They call, he in the he movie, was good they looking. Call him. He was like the stud. He was sexy as fuck. Exactly. He was very sexy. Pizza face, as you call him. <laughs> I, I find pepperoni sexy. Son, hopefully, people it. don't call you that. But I'm just saying, he was very sexy, and I liked that he had that. Not that I, I didn't like that he had that on his face. I wasn't like, ooh, thank God. For the record, those. they called but him I that found in the him, movie. They not, I'm not, yes, they yell it at him. Pizza face. <laughs> I'm going to Google it while you keep talking. Oh, the T Birds do? Yeah, like when they yell at him. Oh, but they were like the losers who. Weren't they weren't allowed. losers, the T-Birds. But I feel like those guys were like the badasses, I, the other ones. I'm just saying so I like, didn't make up the name. Okay, anyway, but that was his name. Anyway, so see, some people make fun of him, but he was damn sexy. He was super sexy. And he had a really Very hot good girlfriend. He was super hot girlfriend. Yeah, and then he ended up going to the dance with the other hot girl from the other school. Like, it ended up working really well for it him. It did. The guy he that won. got the most sexy, beautiful women, whatever you want to call it, in my high school was he had horrendous skin. Really? I've never seen I, anything like it. Really? Yeah. Oh, wait. They it's don't terrible. call him Pizza Face. It's not Pizza Face. No, you're just really Crater Face. Crater <laughs> Face. Hey, Crater Face. Yeah, that is right. <laughs> Shit. That's correct. Shit. Crater Possibly Face. Possibly more creative than yeah, Pizza Face. And yeah. even worse. No, but that's yeah. interesting. Do you think that that guy later on had difficulty with his skin? Like, do you think it's a Oh, no. I still know. He lives in LA. I still know him. He, and is he a bad skin still? Yeah. It's just, well, he's scarring. He's you scarring. Know? But it doesn't matter at all. He's yeah. always dating amazing looking women. And the thing is, he was super nice. Outgoing and charismatic and fun. Everyone liked him. He had terrible skin, but it was just like, oh well. Because and you guys can speak to this better than me. But when guys are looking at women, it's like ninety percent looks and then ten to twelve percent other stuff, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of what our biology it's the says. Opposite. With women, it's inverted. Yeah, it's like. I don't, All right. I don't know what the percentages are, but yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, the percentages are fake. I, I'm making these up, yeah. right? Because women are just, they're much more open, like, oh, well, he's fun, he's cool, and he's funny, and all this stuff. And guys are like, yeah, she's fun, she's cool, she's funny, but oh, I don't know. She really is like 15 pounds face. overweight. Yeah, exactly. I can't deal with it. You know, guys are, are so much, we're just wired differently. You know what yeah. annoys me? We've had a few reviews or something in the past. I haven't looked in so long, but people saying, Unless you're a hot dude, this advice on the show won't work for you. No, people, it's the we opposite. Nev- people we say never that say to that. Me all the time. We from never my ever website, say you have to be hot. Like, what are you reading? Right. What are you reading that right. is telling you? They're this? just yeah. assuming that because they're speaking from fear, yes, and that's exactly. what they're going in thinking. Exactly. They're not even listening to our podcast. No, no. they're just assuming that's what the advice yes, is. Exactly. They're just trolls, horrible. People. But it is. Guys yeah. are definitely more of the perpetrator yeah. of that stuff than women yes, are. I, yeah. Which is why they believe it's not as attractive. Th- that's why they have it themselves. Exactly. Because guys are writing these reviews are, are worried about this because any human thinks that other humans think the way they do, right? So as, as guys, we're like, well, of course, I'm looking at looks, so women, of course, must be looking at looks too because that's how I'm thinking. Yeah. What we don't, we don't know unless we can actually have our brain transplanted into the, or have hormone, ba- actually, here's an interesting story. A friend of mine, or a friend of a friend, he transitioned from a woman to a man, and one of the interesting things that he told me was... I totally get how guys like need to have a sex, whereas before he was just she when she was a, a woman, woman, she was yeah. like, I always just thought like this is kind of weird that you know guys are just so into this, but it can't be that different. And then she, when she transitioned, she was like, okay, I get it. You mean? Yeah, yeah, tons of hormone treatment. She's like, okay, no, I wake up now and I'm like, the, need to bang, need to bang, right? right? It's totally different. It went from. Her thinking, oh, guys just desire sex more. So she thought, I'm going to expect to desire sex more when I have these hormone treatments. She's like, no, it, it crosses over from really like sex to, to him. Yeah. having to just like needing it, like compulsion. And that's what it's because, guys, we don't realize that he's basically now like, I understand rape. I understand, yeah, or like, I understand <laughs> going at, I think rape might be more about power. Let's go, let's not go down that terrible road. Can I just road. throw this in real quick? Me I was too. reading, God. I was reading an article yesterday that said sperm is an antidepressant. And so, okay, well, because there's a lot of uh, properties no in, wonder all these I'm sorry, not sperm, yeah. not sperm, but uh, uh, 
Seminal fluid or something? Seminal fluid or yeah. whatever. Not really? the actual sperm, but what's in it. Yeah, <laughs> I've read gotta, that too for some reason. You gotta it's, take it's it tied off. to testosterone. But in the article, it was such an idiotic question because they were saying how when sperm is in a woman's body, she should be happier. And so Elaine. one of the questions was, so is... So is will rape make you happy? Oh my god! Or being raped make you happy? Like wh- who is asking this question? Somebody, this is, somebody is looking for. I'm an like, out. well, the raper, yeah, maybe. Yes, but exactly. Holy, somebody from a country where they don't talk about. Yeah, he's sexuality looking for some positive. He's like, so I could be making women happy. Doing <laughs> that right. was insane. That, that, to that's his plea. My bad exactly. Right. Horrible plea, and you're gonna get Holy crap. killed in jail. Don't so, ever do it. So I would say to this guy, don't tr- don't worry about the acne thing. Well, let me ask you it's a question like because you, you were about. saying before that you were a bit of a fatty. <laughs> uh, that's an overstatement, but okay. That, that's, pretty, that's pretty much what you said. Like we're calling this guy Crater Face. You Let's go fatty. back four years that's on Facebook, okay? Slim. Anyway, yes. when you were <laughs> obese, <That's laughs> when you were on the show, my six hundred pound life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you know you were heavier, and did it affect how you? Interacted with. He already said you didn't know. No, I totally didn't know because I wasn't. You see, slow changes over, and it was also. It wasn't like I couldn't fit into clothing or something like that. Right. You, it was just <laughs> Marnie is yeah. making him sound like. You I just was like, oh, I'm not like the athlete that I was in high school and college. I definitely like. <laughs> And I look at photos and I go, oh, I don't look good in this picture. And then I look at pictures now and I go, oh, I look totally different. Here's the thing. I didn't know I was losing weight over the last year because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't weigh myself. That's when you see side by side. Oh, yes. Uh, I didn't realize. And then oh, so Jen. all the clothes fit? The uh, well, they were a little looser. Right. But Jen goes, hey, there's a scale in the bathroom at this resort in Mexico. She goes, weigh yourself. And I go, I haven't weighed myself since we moved out of San Francisco down to San Jose, which had been like two a year or two. She goes, just weigh yourself. I'm curious. She weighed herself because she knows how much she weighs. She's like, yeah, the scale's accurate. So I got on it and I went, holy shit. I lost 30 That's pounds. That's crazy that you wouldn't even notice. Didn't no, notice. you don't. When it's, when it's a slow progress, it's, gradual, it's the same when I you guess. don't notice you're gaining weight. You know, it's yes, like but you notice that was a little tight. Yeah, but you don't loose. notice until it's like, oh shit, thirty pounds. Yeah, thirty pounds. That's a, how tall are you? Uh, five ten. I feel like you would notice thirty. Pounds. Anyway, fine. Yeah, you weren't well, noticing it. Too busy being distracted with your podcast. I, I have the same clothes, so I went and I got new clothes, and everyone's like, "Whoa, you look really good." Yeah, and I went, "Oh good. yeah, my crap fits now." Yeah. But like this jacket that I was wearing before, I had that jacket. when I was thirty pounds heavier. I don't really? even know where it is. It's behind actually, you, you know what? And, I do recognize that jacket. That is yeah. funny. And it just kind of. But my question is like, okay, so obviously you didn't know that you were heavier, so it wasn't something that was an insecurity for you. Is there something that was an insecurity for you in the past uh, that you hyper focused yeah. on? Uh, that- one particular thing that I focused on, hmm, I don't think so. I think I was just generally insecure years and years ago. Like yeah. everything was, I always overthought everything. I was really in my head. I was like, okay, think of this. Oh, when that's stupid. 20. Don't say that. Yeah, in my twenties, I was yeah. like, okay, this is. I'm just general. I was like a generally insecure. Okay. Person, and then I went overcompensated for it, and then sort of made my way back to the healthy middle ground, where Which I feel is, like I, think I am the, now. the normal. If you recover from it, for everybody. Yeah. yes, exactly. If you recover from it, so you go but from my, like. Well, I was trying to draw a yeah. correlation for this guy of like something where you, it it may have existed before for you, but like this guy that you knew in high school, yeah. it didn't matter. And my my question was, does that person who has that thing? Do they recognize this and know it could be a negative, but then just has their personality over sorry or overpower that yeah, negative sure. thought? Or so do you like, think that that person just doesn't even notice the negative thing anymore? I think that when this the guy's potentially negative, thing. yeah, potentially negative thing. When I look at when I think about my buddy from high school, whose name was also Jordan, by the way, um, and no, I'm not talking about Jordan. myself. <laughs> um, Oh. I think, uh, <laughs> or my husband. Or, my best yeah. friend was Kristen, and I am talking about myself. <laughs> yeah, I think when he looked in the mirror, he wasn't like, "Oh, I, I have perfect skin." I think he just went like, "I can't do anything about this." I mean, it was so bad that it was just very clear that nothing was, but not, not clear. Not clear. clear. <laughs> yes, very yeah. not clear. And and the scarring would, had, was already there. So even though he would take he Accutane or whatever, it was just over. Like there was just not. It was not yeah. going to happen. It was a lost cause. So I think he probably went, hmm, "Screw it. All right, screw it." I can either be down and negative and hate it, but he had an older brother who was really charismatic and cool. So I think he just went, well, I'm going to emulate him. And his sister was successful. His sister was like really cool and beautiful. And I remember she moved to LA and he's like, my sister's dating Kevin Costner. And this is like when he was Batman. All right. This is a big, holy. this wasn't like the last two years. This was like Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner was Batman? He was. I didn't know that remember either. Remember that? A, Wait, oh, Kevin, when? Uh, like in the 90s. Are you sure it wasn't? Oh. What's his name? No, 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 no. You, Michael Keaton. You Michael mean Michael Keaton. Keaton. Totally different. Yeah, yeah I'm like, uh, Michael Keaton, 
That's what I meant to say. Oh, I love Michael dating him. Yeah. I love him so much. I love Michael Keaton. Yeah. He's so hangs funny. out in Venice, a bit of a weirdo. I like it. Yeah, he's probably a bit of yeah. a weirdo. Yeah. But now he's had his comeback. I, don't I know actually confuse those anymore. two guys all the time. I was like, Kevin I Costner confused was Kevin not. Costner and Bruce Willis. Me too. Really? Yeah. In the same I actually, category. on a podcast, Dustin said Hoffman Kevin and uh, what's his name? Dustin Hoffman. And what's his name? From De Niro? The, the par- yes, all the time. Really? Yeah. They're in the same category. I don't know why I knew you thought that. Because movie. you could confuse it too, obviously. Those well, two guys are different. Yeah. Harrison they're, Ford, I could see no, you They're confusing. just in the same category. Like they, They're interchangeable to me, I think. Huh. Uh, okay. d- well, I don't confuse them, but no, they're but like the Dustin, same. Dustin Hoffman play, doesn't play like mob bosses like De Niro does. No, he doesn't. So. But they were. Or you they just, just both have gray hair. I don't know what older. it is, but they're just the same to me. <laughs> but the 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 guy with his, his face, Ivan. Ivan. Uh, Son. 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 Sorry. Not that I'm trying to dismiss the emotional part of dealing with this, but can you grow a beard so it's maybe less? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Apparent. Go. I know that's a lucky thing something. as a guy. You can you can cover it up with like some style and some flair. So flare. for me, when I I had a cross, I have a crossed eye. And no, you do. Yes, but when it, when I wear contacts, it is held it. straight. If I take my contact out right now, my left eye will cross. So I never, that, well, I've never noticed seen it. that. Well, you wouldn't life. notice it because my okay. contacts in, gotcha. unless I That's take why my she contact. Got the ulcer because she just keeps it in all the time. Yeah, because I don't. Wow. Want, of course, I have this fear. So I used to have a fear that if I took my glasses off, because when I was younger, no I couldn't wear like contacts. Her. My eyes have been crossed sure. since I was three years old. So that's the reality that I knew. Wow. So what I did was, I just got a personality. Because I was the girl with a crossed eye. I did swimming lessons, so when I'd have to take my glasses off, my eye would cross in the pool. And so I just Aww. learned to be awesome. a charismatic, yeah. funny person. And that's why I am the way I am today. Yeah. Who did you learn from? My dad. No, <laughs> uh, genuinely. My go. dad is so freaking funny and could have been like a late night talk show host. He's so good and so witty. And I just... Follow, I just knew I was naturally like that. So anyway. not from other kids. You didn't see what they were Absolutely. doing. Absolutely, like, okay, none of them are funny. My dad. That's no, interesting. All dicks. Yeah, we but all, no. I mean, I had to learn to have a different sure. side to myself. We all focus on the one insecurity that we find as a pet that we just put all of our actual emotional insecurity into. So Jordan from high school, the uh, the guy with the terrible skin, he probably just did not do that because he went, okay, I have another path. But it's funny because like you, I always thought you're really hot. So the fu- the fact that you would have a crossed eye is like who, I wouldn't. I would have been like. And what? I don't care. Well, it's funny because yeah. my, I, my I have leave? a What's boyfriend. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Anyway, well, yeah, you're welcome. My boy, current boyfriend, he has said, <laughs> just so you know, I, I have a boyfriend, f- Jordan. He's <laughs> not going anywhere. <laughs> I see your wedding ring. I see your wedding ring. He has said that. Uh, nice. He said that if I see you with your eye cross, I'm going to fall even more in love with you. Oh, Aww. that was a good move. Mm-hmm. I like good that. Line. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Very line. good. He's line. like, it's just Great endearing, place. and you're so cute that you can have it, and it's not. A, you know, so I've just and I, you know, I'm charming with him. I'm funny with him. So it's just you have to, you gotta own it, own it, yeah, own it. And if it if it sucks, it sucks. Get cry about it for 15 minutes, even for a week, whatever it is. Our friend John Stevenson, I always oh, yeah. quote what he told me like 12 years ago when he would be really down about his position in life, the fact that he has brittle bone disease in a wheelchair, three feet tall, like all his bones and limbs are broken. His mom would come in from the other room with an egg timer and say, this goes on for 30 minutes. You get mm-hmm. to be upset for 30 minutes. It dings, done. Well, and then you move forward. Here's a line. Uh, that, like if you like have a girl give you a kiss on the cheek, like you can say like, you just landed on the moon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Perfect place to end the show. Actually, nice. Son did ask another question, but hopefully we can convince Jordan to stick around for yeah. another show. Because um, now we were that we pre-record our shows to people. I think they might know. And they know already. And we're going to end the show right now. But if you want to write in questions to ask women, write them into ask at askwomenpodcast.com. New episode. Actually, no, sorry. Go listen to the Jordan Harbinger show. I, yeah. I feel like we've plugged it continuously throughout the show, but please tell people where to find Sure. Yeah, you're show. listening to a podcast right now. Search for the Jordan Harbinger show in any podcast app or Spotify or go to jordanharbinger.com. And if you can't spell that, then you're probably not going to like the show because it's for smart people. <laughs> it's all about spelling. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's, yeah. it's about <laughs> show about spelling. It's, 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 you can't listen to it. It's called the spelling <laughs> be not funny. Not I couldn't funny. think of it. Nah, now. But I had a good joke and I killed dad? it with the bad yeah. joke. Yeah. Oh well, landing right. on the moon. Anyway. Yeah. Go listen to new episodes of the Ask Women podcast because they come out every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Don't be an idiot and download individual episodes. Go and subscribe and please go onto iTunes. Rate us. Even if you hate us, please just tell people what you think so that we have more reviews there. We will see you guys next week. Bye.